Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh is a retired physician and is also the founder of an organization that's nationwide called Health Watch USA. Hey, good morning, Dr. K. Uh, good morning, Jack. Man, do I have questions for you. I hope you have a few minutes. I sure do. I'm, I'm here. Uh, first question that my wife wanted me to ask was, if you have had COVID, regardless of whether or not you've been vaccinated, can you get it again? Yes, you can. And you can get it again even if you're vaccinated. Won't likely to end up in the hospital if you're vaccinated, but there's no guarantee if you had COVID before. And one of the best ways to look at this is your immune response is proportional to the amount of virus you're exposed to or that you have. And everybody's different. So it'd be kind of like would you want to get a vaccine where you don't know the dosage? They just kind of randomly draw it up from the vial. That's the situation those people are in. And you combine that with the data that we're getting, both from Israel and now the Mayo Clinic, that after about five months, this immunity to the vaccines are waning. I would expect the same would be occurring with infections. So I, I wouldn't count on natural infection. In fact, there is some data and I would say quite a bit of data to indicate that natural infection is not as good as vaccines with, and certainly with the Delta variant, because that's this year's virus, right. the, the vaccine and your infections aren't last year's virus, don't expect it to work well. And that's the reason why everybody is so concerned and interested in about boosters, because you want to make sure that your antibody levels are at the highest they possibly can be. So if you've had a vaccine, especially the mRNA vaccines within the last couple of months, I would expect you're going to have at least good protection against hospitalizations and deaths. But if your vaccination is more than five, six months ago, you're greater than 60 years of age, or you have an immunocompromising condition, I would be extremely careful. And in fact, that latter group, immunocompromising condition, the FDA just approved another dosage of the vaccine. So you should be contacting your doctor to get that. Yeah, I saw a third COVID shot for people in poor health, but now that is the vaccine from last year won't do anything to prevent you from getting the Delta variant. Is that right or no? Well, no, I, I wouldn't make it black and white. If your antibody levels are high enough, it will protect you against infection. According to Israel's data across the board, it will prevent symptomatic infections about 41% of the time. But it is great, very effective still at preventing hospitalizations and deaths. Of course, the caveat to that is I'm hearing a lot about long hauler syndrome in people who've had breakout infections. And if you're vaccinated, wear a mask. You could look at what happened to one of our state senators and her family, which was fully vaccinated, and a number of those individuals got infected with COVID-19. A friend of mine from down in Florida had the exact same thing happen with his family. Three out of four people got COVID-19. And again, as he'll point out, they are getting very sick. He knows people that have had chronic heart conditions with long COVID and very problematic. But the people that are getting in the hospital coming out in wheelchairs, chronically on oxygen, or dying, those are the people who don't have the vaccine. And believe me, right. that's a big plus to avoid that. So get vaccinated, wear a mask, and let's not pretend like this virus has gone away, because it hasn't. We're in the midst of the largest surge we have ever experienced. Okay, now this is something I read online, and I always check with you, because I don't believe half the stuff I read online, but this says... When it comes to COVID-19 virus, it's not over till it's over. People who recover from even a mild case can experience fatigue, anxiety, heart issues, shortness of breath, and uh, brain fog months later. If you're one of the millions of Americans who've had the virus, keep checking with your doctor. Do you agree? Definitely. One of the problems, and we talked about this last year, everybody thought I was crazy, alarmist, etc., was that this virus is as much a heart and vascular virus as it is a lung virus. And the lung disease causes the symptoms. Many times, heart and vascular disease is asymptomatic or without symptoms, even though damage is being done. And that damage may not occur until years later. 
initial signs may be, for example, an arrhythmia. So yes, if you've had this virus, you should have chronic follow-up. Brain fog, we are still learning about, but there have been MRI studies which have shown that there are changes, and of course, with the loss of the smell, that is also indicative of infection that is approaching up into the brain, because your smelling nerves are actually projections of the brain, the olfactory bulb. And so th this is very concerning, and we don't really know how long these symptoms last. In some people, they obviously clear. In other people, it may take them a long time to recover, or they may always have a residual. Again, another reason to wear a mask. And when we talk about masks, get an N95. This virus is highly contagious and infectious. You can order those on Amazon. Kimberly Clark has them. Uline, which is the letter U, L-I-N-E dot com, is another company that has them. Cloth masks may not afford you the type of protection that you need. And during these viral surges, going indoors, especially in poorly ventilated public areas, needs to be avoided. Same rules, only worse than last year's pandemic and surge because we're dealing with a more infectious, easily spread virus. And we need to up our game in masking and precautions. One more thing, and that is uh, Kentucky State Fair. Uh, bad timing, right? Horrible. The only saving grace is we may get hit by a hurricane, which might decrease attendance. But yes, that's bad timing. New York is opening up, declaring, you know, everything's fine. We're going to celebrate. They're, you know, reducing the size of their celebration to 60,000, have to be vaccinated. But as we discussed, vaccination doesn't give you a complete pass on not getting infected. And 60,000 is a lot of people. So that's another spreader event. You can look at the reports of some presidential birthday parties, Fourth of July celebrations. All of this is crazy. It's sort of like we're willing the virus away. If we pretend it's not here and celebrate, it'll be fine. It's not fine. This virus is mutated. And that's the reason why herd immunity has no chance of working because the virus changes. And after we're through this surge, if we don't get our act together and stop the spread of the virus and start taking vaccines, we will get hit with another surge. So we're in this for the long haul, Jack. We need to start investing in our schools, in infrastructure, in good air exchanges and air sanitization and indoor settings. My preference is the school should be providing every child with an N95 or KN95 mask. And if they can't tolerate that, then an extremely high quality medical mask. It shouldn't be up to the families to try to find this, especially some of the families from poor neighborhoods that, that may not even have adequate access to the internet. So we need a lot to do to prepare for this, which we should have been doing last August. We talked about ventilation, air exchanges, and what needed to be done with schools last August. And yet it's still not done. Uh, Lane is just back for the first day from being quarantined with COVID. Do you have a question? I'm sure you do. Well, I was, I was just curious, how long, uh, how can I expect maybe to feel the remnants of COVID be, you know, sticking around? As, as far as symptoms for the person or the virus in the community? I'd say for, uh, for the person. I don't have like the long haulers, but, but I can, you know, it, I can still tell that I've, I've still got remnants of uh, maybe a cold. A week I, and you know, that kind of thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I would think it could be months. I mean, look at mononucleosis. People would be sick with that for months and months and months afterwards. So it's not unheard of. And this virus is doing at least that much to people, if not more, because, again, it's involving many other organs of the body. So it's a virus that we need to take seriously. As far as the community goes, the virus may be here a long time. As we discussed, I'm scared it's getting an animal host. We've seen it in a number of zoo animals, cattle. Some farmers are giving the cattle vaccinations. We have also have reports that it may be in white-tailed deer. So all of this is problematic. Uh, you hear all the time, well, you know, the 1918 flu went away in two years, and that's all we need to expect. Well, that's not necessarily the case. When you look at polio, when you look at measles, when you look at smallpox, th those viruses were around for really centuries. 
So this may be something we need to learn to live with. Again, this is another message we've been talking about for a long time. And the first step in learning to live with this virus is to respect other people and to respect other views and ideas in our communities. But we all need to follow public health advice. And that is absolutely key because the virus will not compromise on that. We need to slow down its spread. Got to jump in here. Thank you so much, Dr. Kavanaugh. All right. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it.